Hello there and welcome to Blue Sky Media, the only channel that uh, discusses those pertinent issues, issues that deserve uh, to be looked at and looked at the second time. My name is Sivong Musa Lodlo Umbangazeta, and uh, we get to discuss uh, very important subjects. And for you not to be able to miss uh, those subjects, uh, please remember to click uh, the, the subscribe button right there at the bottom and ensure that uh, you don't miss out on any subject that we discuss. Today, we have a very, very special guest uh, who will be talking to us about his life, about uh, um, uh, his role uh, in the society, uh, talking about the country and where it's headed to. Allow me to introduce uh, my special guest, uh, who is uh, none other than Chief Nshanshaya Mango, Felix uh, Ndiwen. We say, Nkosi, welcome uh, to the program. Thank you very much, uh, Mbangasita. Thank you very much indeed. And I say, Hello to your viewership and listeners. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, as I was introducing you, I referred to you as chief, as what we know. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I know that uh, uh, already some uh, will, will have the very first question to say, but uh, didn't we see a, a letter that uh, was uh, that was sent from a central government that was indicating that uh, uh, you have been removed of that title of chief? Maybe walk us through that experience. What's the position? What's been taking place? Uh, the, the position, I think, in a nutshell, one would equate it to uh, local politics. Now, local politics does not get involved in traditional affairs. It cannot jump over that road into that arena. So local politics may try as much as it can try, but it can never quite effect such a traditional change. And so really, in my particular case, obviously, it stemmed from the um, local case uh, that I had in Dubbers and Duna, whereby I had to sanction a lady, uh, shall we say, a lady of the night, who was quite loose. Uh, and obviously, that went to court, and that led to my incarceration at Kami Prison. But the lady in question was part of ZANU-PF Women's League. And so the local Zona PF people were quite angry about that. And so they obviously engineered all sorts of things to try and see how they could remove Chief and Red. Now, in the Constitution of Zimbabwe, it is very clear indeed that when it comes to traditional matters, especially matters of succession, chieftaincy succession, or traditional leadership succession, the government has a full stop in that arena. There's a certain part where the government cannot get involved in, cannot encroach in, cannot dictate in, has actually no voice whatsoever in that arena, and that is in chieftaincy successions. The constitution 2013 says that succession matter is in the arena of the clan of that chieftaincy. So, so long as the clan of that chieftaincy has come to an agreement that our chief is Mr. X, the minister can't remove him, the vice president can't remove him, the president can't remove him, even the high court cannot remove him, even the constitutional court cannot remove him, even the Supreme Court cannot remove him because it has been dictated in the constitution that that is in the arena of the clan of that chieftaincy. So even if a president writes a letter to say I've dethroned you, that is just politics, mere politics. Uh, it has no effect whatsoever in that arena. And if one were to look at the letter that was issued by E.D. Mnanagwa, you will very clearly see that really it was just for, shall we say, political consumption uh, to make the local Zana people think that they've achieved something. But in essence, nothing has been achieved. And uh, the clan and Dweni of Ndabazanduna are resolute that there's no vacancy, there's no change. Chief Ndweni, Sanjamangwe continues 
And indeed, I've continued ever since. Um, indeed, over a few weekends ago, I had Zoom meetings with all my suburbs and village heads and all those things. And we're discussing matters within that arena. So to all intents and purposes, I have not left the job role. I've continued. It has been absolutely much about, much ado about nothing at all. Then there are those that are uh, of the opinion uh, that says uh, um, uh, you were in courts deposed of being a chief uh, because of meddling in politics as opposed to uh, playing the traditional function that uh, chiefs are supposed to play. Uh, thus, uh, uh, they also go on to say that uh, referring to you as a fugitive of the law. What's your response uh, to this? Uh, no, sometimes it comes from a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding about the role of a chieftaincy in the modern age, 2022. Um, once again, I will refer so that people know where I'm coming from and people aren't saying Chief Green is just speaking. Once again, I'll refer to our constitution, uh, 2013 in Zimbabwe. That constitution says in point blank, uh, open paragraph, that chiefs will sit in the House of Senate of the Parliament of Zimbabwe. The minute you put chiefs in the House of Senate in the Parliament of Zimbabwe, you open the door for those chiefs to, to discuss domestic affairs, political affairs, international affairs, because they have to enter into the discourse of that chamber of parliament to have an input, to have an insight so that that discussion may proceed. And at the end of the day, so that those new laws that the current government wants, the House of Assembly wants to bring in to Zimbabwe can either be brought in or rejected. The chief cannot be a dumb idiot in that discussion. It will be a massive disservice to the institution. It will be a massive disservice to us Africans to say we willingly want to dummify our chiefs. That is nonsensical. A chief, when you look at any jurisdiction, is entitled to speak about absolutely everything. When you come to Ndabas and Duna, if there's any issue or any problem, the government of the day will say, Chief Ndwen, what happened to your clinic? I'm not talking about health matters. Chief Ndwen, what happened to your school? I'm not talking about educational things. Chief Ndwen, what happened to uh, the teenage pregnancies in your land? I'm not talking about gender equality and all those things. So when it comes to my jurisdiction in the area, I am the first port of call and I must be able to enunciate what has transpired, what has not transpired, and what is happening. And so as a chief, I actually have more authority to go into any discussion than say a minister of uh, internal affairs. That minister has to confine themselves to internal affairs. You can't have a minister of internal affairs suddenly encroaching into the minister of agriculture. It's not done. Uh, it's not done. So as a chief, I actually have more authority and power to discuss absolutely everything. Because at the end of the day, my people will come to my house discussing everything on the table. In answer to the earlier question with respect to a fugitive, once again, we are looking at politics. It would appear that maybe Chief Mishajaya Mangundeni is troubling the Zanupia government too much. Uh, that's what it amounts to. People must not look at it in that particular way. Once again, it stems from that Mbele case of the woman who was a little bit loose coming through, whereby at that time, um, I had medical eye problems, which I still do. And so I requested permission from the Zimbabwe Republic Police and from the state that can I go to the United Kingdom for you? They said, yes. And I said, do you know I have to sign every Friday at the local police station? 
I will not be able to do that. They said, yes, chief, we know that. But the medical condition takes higher priority than you sign. So I came over here. Whilst over here, someone says, ah, chief, we're going to run away. He isn't signing anymore. Warrant of arrest. We want it. We want it. We want nonsense. Politics. Right, uh, you are touching on uh, the role of chiefs and uh, we've been seeing chiefs getting involved uh, in uh, some subjects and uh, there is of course uh, happiness in, in the section and unhappiness on the other section. I'll just uh, pick two points uh, that relate especially to Matebeleland. Uh, the resuscitation of uh, the, the Ndebele monarchy as well as the issue of Kukurahundi. We are seeing uh, chiefs uh, are playing a, a, a particular role. And uh, the feeling among some is that the chiefs are not uh, uh, working in the best interest of people, while the feeling on the other side is that chiefs are the perfect custodians. What's your take on, uh, on, 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 on the role that has been played by chiefs, especially in these two subjects that relate more to Matepele land? and uh, the, the effectiveness thereof, or they are just uh, uh, rubber stamping something that's already there. Yes, uh, it, it's, it's a delicate and interesting question there, but I think a very powerful indeed, because I think it shines a light into the institution of traditional leaders and chiefs. I'll start on your first part of the question with respect to the monarchy. Now, as a traditional chief, I am here. The constitution says, Chief Nguyen, you must protect and maintain your subjects' customs, traditions, practices, and norms of your people, which will be different to say a chief who's in Zwimba, who will be different, say, to a chief who's in Amdale, who will be different to a chief uh, in Kadoma. So here we're looking at one's culture and identity and traditions and practices. Where I come from, the Ndebele Nation, and I use the word nation because I find the use of the word tribe uh, offensive. It's a colonial term. It has vestiges of that you're not quite there. You're not quite a people. You don't have it all together. And yet for us, Bangazita, we have our language, customs, traditions, and everything there. So we are a nation. In our respect, for me as a chief, I know that historically and culturally, I must have a king. I must have a monarchy. That is part of who I am. That is part of my identity to have a monarchy. And so the chiefs must be emboldened, must not be apologetic, must not feel a nervous twitch, must go forward with this idea that a monarchy is essential, will have it. Other people in Zimbabwe did not have a monarchy. We're not forcing our monarchy upon them. Our monarchy is for us. If those people in Zimbabwe who don't have a monarchy say, yes, he's a king, well, we are broad. But also in the same vein, if they say we don't recognize that, Still, I will support them because he's not their monarchy. He is our monarchy on that. And so we must speak very strongly about that, go for it, and do the full work to get that monarchy in place. With respect to the monarchy, I can see so much coming from central government, trying to muddy the waters, bringing in contenders left, right, and center, bringing in dubious historical facts, bringing in all sorts, they're chucking the sink and the water and the dirty water on us to try and stop us having a monarchy. Our monarchy is vital, we need it. We have our monarchy already. Uh, he is there uh, in Kosi. Ulelani Lopemula Kamsiligaz is there. And he was crowned as tradition to text in a private coronation. Wherefore, after that, the public coronation will happen. Exactly as what we saw for Zulu, Isilo Samabanja, Mrs. Zulu, Zulu, was crowned privately so that there was no gap in between the passing on of his mother, who then was regent in South Africa, 
to him so that there's no gap. Because in a monarchy, if there's a gap, that is dangerous, very dangerous. So logically, that coronation will always be instantaneously, privately, and then the people Uzulu will come into it after that has been done. So even if you come to the United Kingdom here, where I am at the moment, Queen Elizabeth died. When she died in Scotland, her son, the regent, Prince Charles, was there. The minute she passed away, Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales, became King Charles III instantaneously. King Charles III has not yet been publicly coronated, but he's King Charles III. His coronation will come May 2023, next year. So sometimes people get confused about that whole issue. So in answer to the chief thing, yes, chiefs must go forward. In answer to the Kukwahundi, once again, another term I loathe, I hate, I despise, because it denigrates what happens to the Ndebele nation as some minor issue. I always refer it to the Ndebele genocide and Ndebele crimes against humanity. I'm straight talking right there, because that's what it was. Chiefs at this juncture, at this moment, cannot, must not, should not get involved in this matter. It has not come to that time yet. The beginning of this matter must be a judicial process because crimes were committed during that old event. Whether we are looking at 30,000 to 40,000 Debele people killed, whether we're looking to over 100,000 Debele women and children raped, whether we're looking at uh, 350,000 Debele men and women injured, or whether we're looking at over 1 million Debele people displaced, a crime was committed. Genocide, crimes against humanity. We need to begin at that process and time. The government is very clever with its narrative. It is trying to sweep aside the judicial process and go to the end of the process, which is about reconciliation, peace, all those things. All these issues come at the back end of a judicial process. To be blunt, Banazita, we are looking for the arrest, the detention, the trial, the incarceration of those who were proactive in effecting the Ndebele genocide and crimes against humanity. We cannot get away from that. I know that kind of talk for myself will send shivers to the Zona PF government currently there in Harare, but that is how it is. If you commit a crime, the law must come in, the law must take its course. And so I'm very careful, and I note that yes, Chief Mujana Kumalo will be producing a document to the government uh, any day now about what has been delivered and what has been discussed up until now. But my view is very forthright and very straight to say whatever is contained in that document, I'll be advising Uba Mujana to say whatever Dom Dala is contained, contained in that document. Do not sell out the Ndebele nation. If you sell out the Ndebele nation, if you sell out Abant Bekos, Nyane Sokoto Mbulazi, you will have fire upon your head. The institution of traditional leaders will be in the firing line, and rightly so, because they would have sold out Abant Bekos. It is a heavy subject.
All right. Um, uh, we, you know, we can talk the whole day. There's so many issues that we want to touch on. Uh, for those that just joined us, uh, we have uh, uh, Chief Nsanshayamang Wendiweni, uh, who's uh, joining us, uh, and we're discussing wide-ranging issues uh, from his chieftainship uh, to the, the the role of the traditional system in the country, as well as uh, the the state of the of the country and where it's headed to. And now um, you just touched on uh, the role of chiefs and uh, areas where you feel that they must be proactive and on and some areas where they must stand aloof. So just in a sentence, confirm, you are saying that uh, when it comes to Kukurahundi, justice must take its course, the chiefs must not get involved. Balazita, that is 100%. Justice must take its course, uh, uh, international tribunal must be convened, the chiefs must take a step back, must take a step back. All right, thank you so much. And uh, you were talking, you were talking about um, uh, the, the 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 country's laws uh, uh, that uh, uh, the country's laws will dictate that justice takes place. And one of the areas where the country's laws uh, uh, also steps in is when it comes to elections. And there's a country next year we are headed to an election as the law dictates. Um, uh, what, what what's your take uh, as uh, as a country as we head to that uh, uh, very important uh, uh, program uh, of uh, any other country? Uh, Twenty twenty three Zimbabwe goes uh, to an election. What's your thoughts uh, headed to that? We've seen you have also been uh, speaking a lot about uh, that coming election. And what's your point? What's your standpoint uh, pertaining to that? Uh, the election is coming ahead. Uh, we can't run away from it. It is coming ahead. We cannot say we are not going to be part of it. We are going to um, uh, walk away from it as a sign of protest or not take part in it as a sign of protest. Whether you protest and do not take part in the election, the election goes ahead. Uh, even if you sat down and you've not taken part, you know what? On the Monday morning, you will have a new member of parliament who is with you for the next five years. Whether you like it or not, whether you protested or not, that is guaranteed. So my first answer is that everyone must take part. Yes, of course, reading is dead. It has already begun. Uh, it is the life of Zimbabwe, but that should not uh, dissuade people from taking part. Take part in it so that at least you can try to change your country or have a voice in your country. Not taking part in the, in the coming election, basically you are saying you've surrendered, you've surrendered, you've given up. Uh, let them do with me whatever they want to do. That is exactly what you are saying. I've surrendered, it's done. So for me, I'll be saying to you, I don't want to hear your voice for the next five years because you surrendered. Don't complain to me about this, and that and that. You surrender. So with regard to the election, people take part. It's vitally important there. When it comes to this election, I've touched on it. Rigging was already in process. Obviously, the electoral reforms have not been implemented. So already it is questionable. The results of the election, I would say, is questionable only if we say or we hear that Zana PF is claiming electoral victory. I don't accept that. For me, I'm very clear in my mind that the opposition will win hands down. It's, it's a given, it will win hands down. It comes down to what or how that transition of government will then be affected. And this is when we come into the situation whereby, as all opposition parties there, they need to make sure that their regional links are tight, the international links are tight, in the, even as far as the UN that they are tight, to ensure that that transition occurs from uh, the current government to the new civilian government that comes in. In addition to that, I've been championing the idea of the diaspora vote, where the Zimbabwe diaspora, wherever they are in the world, must vote. The government has said no. I've said we will do an independent diaspora vote. Um, that will occur, that will be happening 2023, um, so that at least the diaspora has a voice. Um, in 2018, the total number of people that voted in that election was 4.2 million, 4.2 million. 
the Zimbabwean diaspora that was denied the right to vote was 5.2 million. So already you see the numbers speak that we've been playing kid in garden there. We've been doing elections as if we were ECD in the small primary schools. We have not been coming up to the plate. And so the diaspora must come on board and cast their vote. This independent vote does not have Zach in it, does not have the government in it, but it has powerful reasons for that. And it will have effects for that, especially when it comes to that difficult part of this process, the transition between the current government and the next government. This is where the diaspora vote will come into its own, because that is when that envelope will be put on the negotiating table to say, Zanu PF, you claim victory, but what about this X million diaspora vote who also did not want you? So it is vitally important. Maybe if I can come in there, um, uh, you have been talking about uh, uh, legal systems and uh, one will, will jump in and say that uh, the, the current law of the country does not permit uh, a diaspora vote one, two, uh, the, 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 in as much as you indicate that it's an independent uh, a diaspora vote that will take place, uh, which will be running concurrently with uh, the, 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 the Zimbabwean election. How free will it be from manipulation, considering that uh, all the uh, the other players uh, may may uh, we use may may not be uh, part and parcel of verifying whatever is taking place? Uh, there, with regard to uh, the legalities of it, um, the diaspora vote issue has been bubbling under for twenty something years. It's a very old subject. Um, during that process. Many have tried to engage the government. The government has refused. During that process, three high profile cases were taken to the high court. They were all chucked out. During that process, uh, legal cases were held there in the SADAC tribunal in Victoria. They were also chucked out. And in, in every one of those cases, the government of the day has rejected that. When you come to that kind of situation, you then go on to the next level which me and you are entitled to, whereby you go to the international arena to have your voice heard, to do something there so that it comes in. It is a legitimate course of action to completely ignore, I say again, George, to completely ignore the views of the government of the day when it comes to a particular issue that people are so passionate about. When you come to that situation, that is when you go into those regional bodies, international bodies, all of these bodies that every single day of the week tell the government of the Republic of Zimbabwe, do X, do Y, do Z, do D. Me and you are allowed to appeal to those organizations and those institutions. And that is what, the diaspora vote is doing. It is like, simply say, if I give you an example, if we were talking here and it is 1952 and we went into a cafe, the cafe, the La Pana, and we're eating a meal, and uh, Udubi on the other side is smoking his cars, he's smoking a huge cigarette, blowing the smoke in our faces. At that time, he could do that. There was no law stopping him. But now he can't do that. And the reason why he can't do that there was because the people took this issue to the international arena and forced the government of the day, even though Rhodesia at that time was selling so much tobacco, Zimbabwe selling so much tobacco, but they had to give way to the international arena to say, do it. you cannot smoke that cigarette in that restaurant. It's illegal. That's exactly what we're doing with the diaspora. And when it comes to impartiality of the vote, we will be working with international organizations that do votes every single day of the week all over the world. We'll be asking them to give us oversight, to look into it, to make sure that it's right and proper. Right. Um, uh, maybe let's uh, start to, let's wrap things up here. In terms of the future of the country, what do you see? 
The future of the country, uh, Bangazita, is a difficult one because we are coming from 43 years of mismanagement in this government. The opposition that will come in will need to work very closely with the international arena so that we can get our house in order, so that it doesn't take us uh, 40 years to be able to stand up. We need to stand up within five years, within the first term of that government, which means we must work closely with the international arena on that. And within that time frame, the new government has got so much on its table it needs to deal with. It needs to deal with the Kukwahundi and the village genocide. It needs to deal with the aspirations coming from um, uh, this side, from Tuarazi, about what, how they feel to be in the country, or whether it's a, uh, a highly devolved uh, setup, or whether it's a, a federation uh, situation, or whether it's a complete independence. So we are looking at very serious, heavy issues that have all been kept under pressure. But the minute that pressure is released by the removal of the current government, the new government has got its work cut out for it to deal with every one of those issues. So I would simply advise to say, they shouldn't put the doors up. They should engage, they should talk, they should discuss with people. Because at the end of the day, it is only by agreement that people will have a proper functioning government. It is like giving an example here, Vanazita. You cannot look across the road and you see a wonderful, beautiful woman across the road. And then you stand up and you say, well, I want that lady. You then just take her by force. You can't do that. You have to engage with her discuss with her, go out with her, do the full things Lord, Lord, you have been doing about dinners and chocolates and flowers and everything. And only when she agrees, then do you have a functioning union, a functioning family. Dragging her by force will get you into jail. And that's what these guys have done. And then lastly, possibility of coming back home anytime soon? I'm hoping to come back quite soon here, Manasita. My legal team back in Lawayo are working on that dubious arrest warrant. So we're working feverishly. Um, obviously, I know they're trying to keep that going and bubbling away, but I'm confident that the minute they take it to the high court and it's chucked out, uh, I'll be back within a second uh, to continue my affairs. My whole life is in now, uh, and that was Juna. I've got so much to do over there. Um, so yes, that's the answer. Well, final words uh, to the people of Zimbabwe, the people of Ndabazinduna as well. I would say, good people, man, because we are coming to the elections in 2023. Let us not chuck away wound humanity. This is just an election. Uh, politics, you cannot plow politics. You can't cook politics. You can't eat politics. It's just a discussion. Let us not raise it above that level. So do not throw away Ubuntu because it will always stand us in good stead because there's always a tomorrow. And tomorrow we still want to see people doing things. We still want to see nation and indeed nations in Zimbabwe function. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so that was uh, Chief, uh, Chief and Sanchayamangu and Diweni um, uh, from Tabazinduna, who was telling us uh, there about a wide range of issues uh, pertaining to his chieftainship, uh, the traditional systems. I also spoke about uh, the elections and uh, uh, the future of the country. I must uh, take this opportunity to say uh, thank you so much, uh, Chief, for your time and uh, for uh, for sharing us, uh, with us your thoughts about these issues that have been uh, noted. Thank you very much, Adonto. It's been wonderful. 
Thank you so much. Uh, so um, uh, that's been the program uh, where we discuss such issues. Uh, make sure that you click the subscribe button uh, to be able to uh, listen as well as watch uh, the same uh, or, or, or issues uh, that are very hot in the Zimbabwean context. Uh, until next time, uh, from me to you, it's cheers. Ta-da.